what is up everyone i hope all of you are doing great and let me go through the question very quickly and this question is from magnetic effects of current so there is a long current carrying cylindrical conductor of radius r current density j is inside the conductor in uniform over its cross section and we need to deduce a suitable expression for force of interaction per unit length between two halves that are obtained by dividing the conductor by a plane containing the axis of the conductor okay so if there is a cylindrical conductor infinite of infinite length okay so considering this as an infinite length cylindrical conductor carrying a current i or having a current density j and it is divided by a plane passing through any one of its diameter into two parts i hope you are getting the diagram here okay so now the whole cylindrical conductor gets divided into two halves okay now from the top view if you try to look at that conductor it would look something like so this is the plane okay and you need to find out the force of interaction per unit length between the upper half and the lower half okay now the things that are given are the radius a current density j and uh, considering that the current is coming out of the plane of paper or out of the screen so as we know that first we need to find out the magnetic field inside any region so let me consider a region a circular region of radius r and uh, using ampere's law we can find out the magnetic field at this point p okay so it will be b dot 2 pi r equals to mu naught times current density into area because i net is the current enclosed by this ampere's loop so b equals to mu naught j r divided by 2 so this is the magnitude of the magnetic field at a distance r from the central line or central axis and the direction of the magnetic field is somewhere here okay now we will use this formula to find out the force of interaction between the two halves so i will be drawing the circuit once again i am sorry the diagram once again let this be the top view and we know that the magnetic field at point p is mu naught j r divided by 2 now let me consider a small portion having angular thickness d theta and of length dr the small current that is flowing through that portion is equal to j times the small area so basically this is nothing but a infinite wire okay and the current is coming in the coming out from the screen actually so the elementary area da here is r d theta times dr okay so this length so this thing if we draw this separately i hope it will be easier for you to understand then so this is r this is theta this is d theta and this is the element we are talking about so this thickness is dr and this thickness is r d theta so the whole area is dr times r d theta okay so this is the current flowing through this small element and this is an infinite wire and the magnetic field on this infinite wire is acting along this direction okay and due to that magnetic field there is a force there is a small force that is acting on the 
on this strip on this exact strip and that force will be d i b times let us consider a length l of that infinite wire ok. Now, d i will be j r square sorry not r square it is r b l d r and d theta ok let me check it once again. So, j r d r d theta b and l ok fine. Now, as you can see now if you use the cross product because in vector form the formula is d i l cross b. So, if you check the cross product of l and b it would be along this direction ok direction of the force on that wire will be towards left. Now, that force can be divided into two parts one is the radial part radial part will be towards the center and one will be the tangential part that is along the magnetic field ok. Now, first let us uh, do the radial part that would be d f cos theta and that is j r b l d r d theta into cos theta. So, let us put the value of b here. So, that will give you mu naught j r by 2 l cos theta d r times d theta. Now, we just need to integrate to find out the total radial force acting on that piece of wire ok. So, mu naught j square divided by 2 l r square d r cos theta into d theta. Now, to find out the total force total radial force between two hemisphere uh, between the two halves of the sorry <coughs> between the two halves of the wire would be 0 to a 0 to pi ok. Now, if you integrate it the answer will come 0 because you people are smart enough to do this integration ok. So, the radial part of the force is 0 now we need to find out the tangential part. So, tangential part will be identical to this one will be identical to this one, but only in place of cos theta it will be sin theta ok. So, d f tangential will be equals to mu naught j square l by 2 r square d r sin theta d theta. Now, integrating from this 0 to a 0 to pi why we are integrating from 0 to pi because we need to take only one half of the uh, the wire actually if you take from 0 to 2 pi our answer will always come 0 ok. So, if you integrate this one then we will get the tangential force as mu naught j square l divided by 2 a cube by 3 and integrating this one will give you 2. So, f t equals to mu naught j square a cube divided by 3 times L and in the question they have asked to find out the force per unit length ok mm, per unit length here. So, the final answer will be F t divided by L that is mu naught j square A cube divided by 3 and as we have seen there is no radial force. So, we do not have to worry about it ok. So, I hope you have found this video informative. Thank you.